Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? I hope you like your shit sandwiches served bright and early. It was another Manchester United thud against Everton, who were in a relegation battle until today, until they picked up three points against the former mighty Manchester United, sir. But today was just kind of more the same from this lot. This team, this season wasn't that much of a shocker if you were to watch the last 20 games. Uh, but even still, when you wake up at four in the morning, it stings a little bit different. How we doing? Uh, you know, it's a rough morning for all American Red Devils out there, especially the ones on the West Coast that decided to get up early to support this club. You know, at this point, Alex, I'd, I'd rather have you out there with a few dark ales under your belt than watch those that those players. I mean, at least you put in a challenge. At least you put in a tackle. You know, maybe run around before you tore that hammy, blew out both knees. <laughs> I mean, that's just horrid, horrid. Top to bottom. We knew it. 5% chance at top four. Now it's a 2% chance. <laughs> Couldn't even beat Fat Frank and that horrid Everton side. You know what? Talk about Sean Dyche on this podcast a lot. That Burnley beat Everton. United just everything you don't like about the modern day game. Overpaid, prima donna, social media, all the bullshit. Stack it up in a sandwich and eat it. They don't deserve to wear the shirt. Embarrassing. Play the kids. No, I mean, that's where we're at. And that I mean, I think it's where we've been at for weeks, months now, because um, this season felt like a wrap. You know, I don't know when the the, more, the moment is when you d- dove the, the stake right through the heart of that vampire of this season. <coughs> Could have been the Liverpool game all the way back when, when, when Ole got fired. City, City again, right? We just had, and then all of the kind of drop points, poor performances. Today is as bad as any of them because... Usually, we've had Everton's number. They're a team that very much so was in a relegation fight. Probably now they're they're going to be in, in much better place. But there's there's no fight in ninety five percent of this squad. So at this point, it makes no sense to really rely on the first team players who are who are already on the way out. A number of them are. Um, so you might as well blood the, the youngsters, and they're all trying to make an impact in the U twenty threes, U eighteens, etc. So that's the only thing is you don't want to pull them away from those competitions because actually. There's uh there's so there's silverware on the table in the youth ranks. Or UEFA Cup is up for grabs. So I'm with you. You know the manager talk. That's kind of gained steam this this week. It doesn't look like um, Eric Ten Hag is going to be the man, but they're still haggling over how much control he's going to have at the club. So that is really what it's going to be the difference at the end of the day in terms of if the next manager comes in and has any chance. Is like they have to give in full Fergie reign, and I'm not sure this lot's going to give it up. You know why you're a savage, sir? It's because, you know, you're getting up for, you're getting up at four thirty AM. Some people might go to bed early to get up. It's like this guy's having dark ales the night before. You can hear it in his voice. Ah, Shout out to Alex. Ah, just like ah, <laughs> can't stop, won't stop. Giggity giggity. Oh my god. It's uh is that, is it just an aside? Is that just like four thirty AM, sir? I'm gonna do it one more time. With pot never sleeps. Pot never sleeps. You know what? Because this kind of performance, this kind of team, sir, I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna move my schedule around because like I gotta be. No, re- I, I gotta be refreshed for this team. I, so I wake up, <laughs> crawl out of bed, and you know what? I expected this, and we got this. So I wasn't even that shocked. I know. I feel like most fans no, dejected, I, but like this was this is about this is a bat market for what today was gonna go. No, it's like a badge of honor. I can't believe you got up. You know, it's like uh, I got the I got two kids now. Cry one cries, the other cries. So I'm up early all the time. I actually feel refreshed. I was able to get some sleep last night, and then you know happened to turn on this horrible football game. But look, it's uh we we talked about it a lot this season. For me, the the reason why this is so frustrating is you talk about like coming into it, the money spent the money being paid to these players, like Cavani is a great example of like, we thought signing re-upping him for another year was a huge win. That's an L. We thought bringing Ronaldo back was a huge win. That's an L. Sancho late start Rashford healthy. Uh, You know, we could talk about Greenwood as well. Like every single thing went wrong for this club that led to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Sorry for smiling that moment out the door. (laughs) 
you know, that was just hard to just like take out one of your legends, you know, uh, and have us play so poorly. But it comes down to what Roy Keane said. There's a, too many bluffers in this team. They threw Mourinho under the bus. They threw Ole under the bus. They got Rangnick in. He wants to play a high intensity style. Ult- ultimately, you see high intensity out there on the pitch. It's testimonial. Leicester City, Everton, dog shit football, lack of effort across the board. It's these players, man. It, it really is. And they've let us down the most embarrassing moments I can remember as a Manchester United fan. You know, that Liverpool game that you went to. For me, it was really the Leicester City game. That was the stake in the heart. It's like, okay, we had a rough start, fired our manager, we bring in an interim, and then all the leak-in, et cetera. That was just so toxic. And how could you ever expect, and this is why we talk about the tea leaves and the locker room drama, how could you ever expect a team that's like leaking against a manager who's interim, who just came in after two or three weeks, and they're already undermining his authority? How are those players ever going to want to play for this team and that's what we saw against Leicester nobody nobody's up for it couldn't be bothered Everton surely like they're horrible they're they're in a relegation fight fat Frank we should slap them around nothing so as far as what this team is now we know bluffers FC soft serve FC like get rid of them all rebuild the team I this is this is so bad that it's like you literally just need you obviously can't get rid of everyone but you really need to be thinking two or three transfer windows phasing out like 70%. It's really that bad. And a lot of it is the dead wood left over. But you can't blame the Matas and the Matishes of the world. We should have moved on from them a long time ago. That's just the Edward Ward special coming back to roost. I wouldn't even let them on the bus after the match. I get a taxi back to Manchester. <laughs> and that's what you'd say for most of this team. Um, but you're right, sir. You're right. And that's why... You know, we've talked about a lot about the manager decision, the new one, whoever comes in, you know, they're going to be they're going to be held back by the board and the people in front of them. You know, the only hope that we have is giving someone basically full reign the same way Sir Alex Ferguson did when he came in, because this club doesn't have the, you know, the administrative layer to like execute transfers and oversee football and philosophy in a way that will make sense for the future. They've shown that they've shown they don't have an ability to do that. So like right now, like you said, it's going to take a lot of time to like call this squad. So there's a lot of bloat even beyond the Matas and the Matiches who, like you said, they're not even like in the Cavani camp. Like they did good. They, you know, they put in good years and we just like stuck with them for too many, too many, right? We just kept riding them and kept re-upping them. And you can say the same about Cavani. You probably should have the one year and be like, all right, now we're going to figure out our long-term striker option. But that's kind of in the patchwork FC. That's, that's just what we get from the Glazers just kicking the can down the road. But at this time, like you said, it's like it's not going to get much better. I mean, where's the bottom? We have Liverpool next week. And they're in a title race. And holy shit, dude, it's going to be an Anfield. Another opportunity for us to embarrass ourselves. Then we got the Gunners, who are like everybody's new favorite team. Embassy Sports, you know, they're banging that drum hot and heavy. So we have another chance for us to, like, embarrass ourselves. So I, I would play the kids. I would play, like, scrappy Hannibal and have them get beat up against some of these these lads because they don't, dude, they don't even try. And they're not doing the badge any service. They're not putting us in a position to, to even finish the season with any kind of, like, pride at all. And at this point, you, you want this season to be over because it's been such a painful journey the last, what has it been, six months? And it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better anytime soon. What, there's seven games left. And at this point, you're just like, Jesus, just call it a day. Because I've never felt that way at the end of a season. I've never felt this way. This has been one of the toughest seasons as a Manchester United fan. Obviously, in our short memory, right? This is not relegation zone. But this is bad in the modern era. You never say, Uncle. You never tap. You never give up. That's what Manchester United is all about. That's what that badge is all about. That's what our history is all about. These players don't understand that. And these players don't deserve to play for this club if they're going to want to tap out and they're going to want to go on vacation. But right now, that's what it looks like. And that's why you feel so bad as a fan because everything this team has ever mattered to you, like, it's just falling through our fingers. It's unbelievable. It's just you're, you're watching Manchester United, but it isn't Manchester United. Other teams give up. Manchester United never gives up. That's the whole fucking point of this club. 
And what we're seeing is there's a bunch of whiny little bitches out there on that field, and I can't stand it. And that's why I want the season to end, because these players don't deserve to be there. And I, I, you know, pardon my French, but at this point, like you said, it feels like such a low for the club. It feels like such a low for the team. It feels like the Glazers are, <laughs> I'll tell you, they're succeeding in actually gutting this club completely. It's all hype, social media, bullshit FC. That's all we are. It's just we're a, we're a laughing stock. We, we've we've done everything except figure out how to play football. Could you imagine like the greatest football club in the world just doesn't focus on football? It's yeah. just so ridiculous. And that's kind of, you know, that's where we have arrived, unfortunately. Um, and, uh, you know, it's all thanks to the Glazers. It's got to be sh- it's got to be hashtag Glazers out. You know, we're going to the Chelsea match. It's going to be a protest. We're talking to the, the 1958 a fan group who's leading the effort. And, you know, this has been going on way too long. This, this has been in front of our face for years. We've Ever since we started the pod, we called it out. You know, I've been wearing the green and gold since 2010, since my first match. And it's like, I'll never stop. The finances are clear. They're gutting this club. The things they're considering doing to fund the stadium are just uh, an embarrassment. They're so, bottom, so you know, they have what, what no bottom. Expect? That's the thing is they have you, like every time you think the Glazers are gonna steep lower Super League, so they're gonna they're gonna try and sell the land that John Henry Davies bought for the club 120 years ago, bro, and just like sell it just to, like last payday. They're gonna literally rip off every piece of this car and sell for parts, and that's what they're they're just going piece after piece after piece because when you constantly prioritize profit over success or just long-term continuity because they're not thinking about the future, bro. They're thinking about just, like, pull every penny out of this historic club. And what you're left with is this laughing stock, right? In terms of the performance on the pitch, lack of effort, I feel like we've been that frog in the boiling pot for years now, right? And that, that was like the ole rod. Oh, Jose, Jose tried to rein it in. Like, the, the players weren't having it. They picked the players over Jose, and Ole tried to just keep it keep it happy, keep it nice as long as he could. And then these players, dude, what did Kino say? They're uh, bluffers, and that's exactly right. Like you mentioned at the beginning of the, of the pod, sir. And they continue to act that way. And you know what? I don't – Conte, he, he might have gotten a certain type of reaction, probably maybe a better reaction than we're getting, but would have been – would have worked long term, probably not, because I think at the end of the day is like you need a clear out, like you need a full on clear out, and a social media that's a social media organization that's like masquerading as a football club is not gonna want to like do the work and take the hits on the chin that they would need to do in order to get this team back to the promised land. Because think about how many losses you're gonna have to take. You know, like you're gonna have to take a Karen Maguire's and AWBs and et cetera, just on the chin, like losing like half the money just to get them out. And they're not going to do that, sir. So they're going to, they're going to, whoever they come in, if it's Eric, if it's Ten Hag, they're going to, dude, he's not going to be in a position to succeed. Because even if they say he's going to have autonomy, he's not, because Matt Judge is still doing deals. And John Murtaugh, less so him, but Richard Arnold, sir, is still like number two with the new guy in charge who was basically Ed Woodward's right hand man. So I think the circle is just going to keep going round and round, like the merry go round, <laughs> the merry go round of hell from the Glazers. No, it's a great point. And, you know, you have to look at the macro, the Glazers. You also should look at the micro, you know, which is the players, their effort. And ultimately, Ralph Rangnick, he deserves some criticism. He can't skate by freely. To blame him uh, for our form is probably like a waste of time. But I will say. <laughs> it's true. If, 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 if he is, his, the criticism I level at him, if he is literally sent in as, if you think of his job role, he's going to go upstairs for two years. And he's going to be behind the scenes advising the club. The fact he is not playing the kids right now makes no sense because he's putting on Matic and Mata and Pogba, who's going to slow jog out of this club this summer. And he doesn't want to see Hannibal, Garnacho, McNeil. Like, we're dying for number nine. Like, Rasher can't do it. Bring in a kid. Like, we need to see these players. This is a great opportunity for them. He needs to evaluate the talent. And it would even help Ten Hag because then he would have the film on it. I do think at the end of the day, like, if he doesn't start playing the kids, I question Rangnick as well because this whole, like, put in Mata to try to beat Everton late makes no sense. It's like, it's over, man. 
it's like we need to start evaluating talent for the future. And I I am perplexed. Why he hasn't started that. That's a very good point. Uh, it's a very good point. I think that's more of a prospect of like that whole he's going to be an advisor is horseshit because they're basically pushing him out. And he's going to do like they said he's going to do like five days a month, you know, and he won't be a full time executive at Manchester United. That's the way it's going. So I imagine. That, so they just like use him as a placeholder while they kind of figured everything else out. And then they'll just throw him out the door, bro. Like everybody else. Like, like how do they sign the NDA? So how did the exactly? NDA I'm sure you already the, did. The bro. Money, you know? I'm sure exactly. you already did, bro. Like how do they treat Robin Van Persie and Rio Ferdinand and Patrice ever, bro? Like how does this ownership treat our former players or even just like staff or whatever? So they throw them out and treat them like dirt. So like, however we get rid of Ralph, Criticism certainly is valid, but like they'll they'll handle it in the poorest way possible um, because that's who this lot is, sir. They're bluffers too. They they're the biggest bunch of fucking bluffers you'll ever find are the people running this club because they they lie with abandonment and they just keep doing it and no one calls them no, out. No, but on it. the real if you really want to break it down, the owners like so as an owner like can they guarantee pick you a great coach? No. Can they guarantee pick you like the next DOF? No. But can they? fire a bad one can they find a good ceo yeah and that's the one thing you have to look at like what was ed woodward's last salvo at the club super league backing ole gunner solskjaer to the tune of half a billion and then going interim on ralph rangnick that was literally ed woodward's last go at the club oh by the way you can talk about bringing ronaldo back you talked about signing Varane for big money on a long-term deal when he had inter- injury issues and re-upping Cavani. Every decision Edward Woodward made was fucking horrible and is playing out right now. And the Glazers promote his number two man. Like, that right there tells you everything you need to know about the board. It is in plain sight. Every decision that Edward Woodward ever fucking made was horrible for this club and put us right in the gutter where we are. And his number two is literally saying we have a world-class football organization <laughs> on the intro call and that we're going to be all right. I know that is uh, absolute horseshit. Sign. If they don't like as an owner, you have to be like, Oh man, like at least the playbook from like the NFL is like fire the GM, fire the coach. Ah, oh, they sucked. It was all their fault. And then bring in new guys. <laughs> and the Glazers are so bold. They're like, we're sticking with the old guys and everything's fine. So, you know, what can we expect? Hashtag Glazers out. Get me some coffee. But before we get into it, quick <laughs> PSA for the podcast. If you like the American Red Devils and you want to join a great community of Muppets online, join our Discord channel. There's an invite pinned on our Twitter profile. We have almost 600 American Red Devils in our Discord channel. It is absolutely a riot. It's popping on match days. And boy, is everyone pretty fired up about this match. Also, check out our Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash American Red Devils. We do a behind-the-scenes episode every single month exclusive to our patreon uh membership we don't have any sponsors we want to be supported directly by you the fans so that we don't have a cup of noodles or anyone ed woodward would pay to tell us what to say on this podcast check it out there's four tiers you can support us we give away pin stickers scarves, shirts you name it great way to support the podcast also check out our website www.americareddevils.com great fan generated blog content it's for fans by fans we want to get the fan view out there Hashtag Glazers out, 10 Hag, et cetera. Please check that out. Support us. Also, click on the store. We have great merchandise. Glazers out merchandise as well. Sir, tell about iTunes reviews. iTunes reviews, still going hot and heavy. They're a great way to support the pod. All you have to do is write a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to the American Red Devils and send a screenshot to americaredevils at gmail.com with your mailing address and I will send you some free American Red Devils merch straight to your door. It's a great way to support the pod uh, and it helps us get found organically, sir, by other Muppets who want to just enjoy the pain together. The pain of being a Manchester United fan in the modern era with the Glazers. I love that analogy. So the GM, just like, yeah, this this GM team should have been cleared out like a while ago. They should have been cleared out in like 15 when the Van That's Gaal the experiment was falling apart, right? It's like, what the fuck were they thinking? And they just, and here's the thing, the stakes are even higher because at least in the NFL, it's like money comes in no matter what, right? <laughs> that money is the good, like the same money is good every year, whereas we have Champions League football to play for. So there's even more of an incentive to get the structure right. And have really smart people behind the scenes, sir. So it's like, 
That just tells you oh, they don't even they have no respect for the club, sir, to even treat it like halfway decently. So there's continuity because really they're happy to leave this carcass by the side of the road. It seems it's a tale all this time. It's like you you fire the staff and then you you, you say you blame it on them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I, I if I was a billionaire, I you know I I even know that move. I'm not a billionaire, but it's like pretty simple. It's like you know, it's like as a, as a New York Giants fan, it's like. Dave Gettleman, he was the problem. You know? You're out, bro. Totally. You're out. Yeah, exactly. It's not that we like, oh, the guy who doesn't believe in data analytics, that guy, he, he's the issue. You know, like something like that. You you fire the old scouts and say, oh, we had a bad apple there. Uh, you know, spin the narrative. They don't even give a fuck to do that. Uh, let's get in this match. Everton won. Manchester United zero. Can't believe I'm reading that result here. At Goodison Park. Uh, man, let's get in that lineup. Dave stays world number one in net. Alex Tellis. Tell me about Tellus at left back. Ooh, Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire, the <laughs> captain of Manchester United. Lindelof, glad to see him back. Wambasaka at right. Matic, Fred, midfield. Fernandez in the hold. Rashford on the left. Ronaldo up top. Sancho on the right. You know, move Sancho to the right. Rashford needs to play on the left there. How'd that go? Ah, uh, didn't go terrific. I think the whole I can't. I don't even know if I can point out a ter- like who was the worst because it was all just collectively just blah, blah. But this eleven, I didn't really notice it because I was kind of still half asleep, waking up. But I, I you know, I wanted to see more of the Montage Fred combo. I wasn't opposed to that featuring Rashford and Sancho, and obviously having Ronaldo fit. So this 11 has got to be good enough to beat an Everton side with Fat Frank just struggling, looking like he's got no idea what he's doing either, sir. How'd that go? Uh, after the loss to Burnley and, uh, you know, they having to play midweek, we get to rest. I, I thought we would win this game. Uh, and we did come out decent. Seventh minute rash for great snap chance opportunity. But Pickford rocking the Draco Malfoy hairdo. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that haircut. I was going to ask you about that haircut, sir. That's like, we talk about the old English cut when we go to London. Uh, That's a certain kind of cut I haven't seen before. Harry Potter fan, big Slytherin (laughs) guy, just like me. I'm a big Slytherin guy. Let's go. Eighth minute, Ronaldo with a good effort, just wide. And then Rasher with a decent headed chance after a nice ball from Bruno. Look, you talk about the first 15 minutes. It didn't look too great. We were having trouble playing out the back against like the world class Everton press, but we were getting chances. And I thought United would finally find pay dirt. I was, I was, de- it didn't look great, but the first 15 minutes, I was encouraged by the opportunities we got. I was frustrated, like McGuire playing out the back, telegraphing everything to tell us, playing the ball into him in poor positions. Very irritating watching this United team struggle. Passing it through Everton's midfield again, losing the midfield battle against Everton. It was it, we were loose and like fast and loose with the ball, if you will, in these twenty minutes. We had some chances, but it was all just kind of sloppy and a little too haphazard. And you know, we had opportunities to break on them and give the ball away. We would just kind of lump it up field. So even with some intensity, there were like you know showing some high press and some actual like movement, but. Sorry, it ended quickly, as we find with this team. Totally. Let's get into that uh, disappointing Everton chance in the 27th minute. 27th minute. Here we go. Chalice is able to pick it up, but it's just taking an extra couple of seconds. In towards Iwobi. This is Gordon. So uh, when that goes in, uh, yeah, you're like, yep, that's about right. Deflection off Airy, um, you know, kind of out of nothing. So they were they didn't have much of the ball or many chances up to this point at all. Um, and all of a sudden, Everton are up. How we feel, and most Manchester United fans feel, I'm like, I've seen this move before. Here we go again. Uh, I can't, I can't really blame Harry. It, Obviously, uh, not a great block, if you will. Uh, <laughs> right. But again, you know, he didn't look great. So, you know, I think it's easy to sort of, you know, bash on Harry Maguire. Uh, not not too many fans cheering his name nowadays, uh, only a week later. But you watch this, 
it's not even like you can't just place it. Like I said, like when we opened the pod or just opened this game breakdown, it's like everybody was a collective mass. So it's like, yeah, Harry bounced off him. But if you watch how the whole defense is defending, they're all just so passive and no one's closing down like aggressively enough. And it's just the whole team is fucking casual, sir. Super casual. So <laughs> it's, it's it like, it is insane how they're mailing it in. Cash, bro. Like, and like, this is the one thing that fans have to understand. And uh, Hanson Hoodle called it out. And he's like, he said it in the post game press like a few weeks ago or a month ago. He was like, it's no, it's no, it's no secret. This team doesn't run. They don't try hard. Like we don't have access to that data, but it is embarrassing. And that's why, you know, that like to a certain extent, people want to kill Rangnick and you can in some ways, but these players aren't working hard. And Ryan Nick is a manager who wants them to work hard. What do you think he's telling them not to run? And at the end of the day, it's kind of like the players are running the show at United right now. It is totally evident. And that's why this team is horrible. It's like basically everyone is over it. Half the team is going to leave. Everyone's thinking for themselves. That's that. That's what this locker room is. Pogba's leaving. Lingard's leaving. Rashford said he wanted out in the press. You know, Matic is probably, I mean, he's got one more year, but, you know, thinking about maybe going to a different league. Like, everyone's thinking elsewhere, and nobody's present. Nobody's galvanized, and our captain isn't doing that job. You know, maybe Harry behind the scenes is, like, really trying, but I doubt it. <laughs> no, and it's a good point. And it's like the players are taking over, and today, it's like, you know, that's why they they are such a, they piss off fans so much by, the, like, the fucking lack of effort. It's because, like, they mail it in, and it's so obvious. Like, it was so obvious sitting in the Stratford end watching them just get beat up by the scouts bastards earlier in the year because they were literally just like walking around bro but they don't care and that's they don't the care they it's like but here's the thing it's like it's like my two-year-old son it's like if i if i, if I tell him hey i'm gonna take this away if he doesn't do something and i don't and there's no consequences and eventually he's gonna act like a like a complete brat and right. i feel like these players through how many managers like they've been bluffing since jose Mourinho. Paul Pogba. Ah, 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 ah. It's like it's been going on. And guess what? There are no consequences. And yeah, they literally don't care. And like, and as a as United fan, I refuse to believe that's the case because I'm like, there's a 5% chance Arsenal bottled it. Like we can make a run like let's go. And they got nothing. And it's because they're not thinking the way fans think, which is that we want to go out and give it all for this team. We're going to the Chelsea match. I'm pumped to fly across the pond and support this team maybe not these players get this, ready this bad get ready i don't care i don't we could lose 7-1 sir i know Ooh. i'll be proud to be so that's in what, the stratford end because that's what this club is about support this club not the owners not the players you know and it's about the fans being together and i'll be i'll be very proud to protest protest the blazers for that chelsea match very excited the stars line there Universe. So the universe, uh, you know, absolutely. But you're right. You're right. Um, it's only going to get, I don't know how, I, I, when you're there, you're still pride in you of like, I'm telling you, when we were singing the Stratford End Horizon, uh, we're getting beat up by Liverpool with the, fly, the fans showing more heart than the players, bro. Like when the Manchester United yes. fans are, are like more prideful of the badge than these fucking like bum players, sir. But that's what this club's about, and we're gonna like we're gonna get these bluffers out, and the biggest bluffers of all the Glazers. They're like, there's no bigger bluffers around than those lot who've been lying to us for two fucking decades. So the players are to blame, but ultimately that's where it starts. But this group of players is like you do want to sell them all because what they've shown is that you know they'll blow with the wind. It's like if we're all going soft, then we're all going soft, and it's like I don't know if a manager is gonna be able to. Like, even get rid of a third of these players and get the rest of them to kind of get their shit together. Cause I don't think so. No. And that, and that's what you talk about. Like when United is losing and the fans are in full voice and singing, there's like pride in that. It's just like, you know, cause it's like the fans are so special to this club, you know, and the, and the players don't deserve it. You know, it, it means a lot to certain, I, I see De Gea, it means something to him cause he was here before this. You know, you can see how upset he gets. And he knows it, knows it. But some of the players, I think, are just desensitized to it. All right. 
36 minute. Let's break down the rest of this shit sandwich. Finish this, Dave finish this, saves. Finish this, sir. Dave saves. Would be surprised if he wasn't stepping up big. I mean, it always has this season. Could be worse. Uh, Richarlison shot. He saved. 37 minute sub. Pogba for an injured Fred. Boy, did Pogba turn it on. Came onto the pitch. He covered every blade of grass. Just kidding. It's Paul. Slow, slow Yagba. Second half, United. You know, going down at halftime. <laughs> look at all those chances. They're going to come out. So look at look at look at look at the uh, look at the absolutely p- nothing. They nothing. did not, nothing. Look at that. There's nothing, sir. Beginning of the half, end of the half. Forty ninth minute uh, chance for Rashford, but you know, Rashford doing it, doing what he's been doing, Tell taking really on think. people, Tell losing the ball. Really think, sir. No, but it's true. It's I like, know. I know. He did do that. It was couple. amazing. It was like uh, I think off the stats is like. Rashford's talking about how he's like made so many starts for United. It's like compared to Ryan Giggs. Then you had uh, Statman Dave talking about how he had stellar first half uh, online. And it's like you look at it and it's like he had three dribbles, lost every take on, no crosses, no nothing from the left wing. His attacking production is like zero. It's like the narrative they're trying to paint around these players is insane. It's like Rashford's horrid right now. People, but the club. <laughs> And the other venues are like trying to get him positive publicity. He's more worried about that than actually getting it done on the pitch. 64th minute double sub Mata and Alonga for Mata and Rashford. No idea why Mata comes on here. I don't mind Mata, but at this point in the season, you know, uh, I, 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 you got to play the kids. And then 93rd minute Ronaldo had his de- decent effort saved. I think there was a shot of handball there, but it was over. They gave up. But that's the shout. Second, started the second half. They gave up. You know, it, it totally like they didn't show. They gave they gave 15 minutes. I'll, I'll, I'll give them credit. <laughs> More than they, they did. Get all right. Like the, the back line looked absolutely shit. And then we created some chances first 15 minutes. And after that, these players literally just gave up. Who couldn't be bothered? Match reactions, shots, seven to 12 <laughs> shots on target, three to four. 68 percent of the ball doing nothing. The, the, watching the like eighty fifth minute where all the players are kind of up and we're trying to get a goal and they're just nothing. You know, nothing. It, it felt like it, it, I had the audio off because I didn't want to wake up my my daughter who's like a week old and my wife who's not getting a lot of sleep and without the commentary, just watching it, oh, it was just brutal. like these guys are so slow. It's brutal. It's brutal. They're just going through the motions. No, like Harry Maguire taking a shot. From range, like I know, there's that was nothing a there. Laugh. That was a laugh. <laughs> it is like it's they painful. Are not, they, they, they want they're on the pitch and they want to go home. They do. They are all thinking about what they're doing after. This the is game. why they gotta go. Dude, they're it's all like, thinking they about all, what they're doing after. This is after like the they game. all gotta go, dude. This is that. That's As why. Fan, that's why oh. the most frustrating thing is like you look at that bench. It's not that oh you look at the bench and like before it's like oh our bench is stacked. No, no. no. Now it's like what the fuck? Who's on our bench, bro? Like Jesse Lingard, why is he doing there? Phil Jones, Jesus Christ, what's he doing there? The Matas of the world. Um, and then you talk about, like, why isn't a Garancho? Why isn't a Hannibal? Why isn't an et cetera there? Because, like, you'd like to see that because those Hannibal kids, was on the bench. Hannibal was, was on the bench. Well, even, I'd feature him before Mata, um, even though, like, dude, no, I, I respect Mata, but those players shouldn't be there because it's like these guys are not willing to put it in the shift and fight for the badge and show what is necessary to kind of bring the physicality and level of effort necessary to succeed in this league, sir. It's like they're it's so obvious that they're just phoning it in that that's why the the fans are like fucking tearing these players apart because I don't think they realize like how clear it is. As you said, you have the audio off, even without the audio off, you just watch it and you're just like, sir, in person, it's 10x. You could not believe how bad it looks in person. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I really can't overstate that. Like, the Liverpool game, they just like they were just surf third minute. They were just walking around, <laughs> just walking. No, I know. It, I, look, I, I can't believe uh, you know you're able to survive all ninety minutes there. Uh, <laughs> look, when I honestly, when I saw Everton win and get the result, I see Frank like you know clapping up their their fans and like uh, the youngster for Everton has scored the goal. And you know what? You know I thought good for them. You know, like Manchester United, like. We're fucking horrible. Like at least Everton is a classic club. They've been they have the record for the amount of times in the first division. Like, you know, as we have an Everton fan as a friend, like as much as I'd like to be like, ah, you're going down, like 
it just made me happy to see somebody happy about football. You know, <laughs> you know, I was just like, all right, you know, at least somebody's happy. You know, it's like that's how low it is at United at the moment. It's just like we are like a pariah. <laughs> you know, at least somebody can like be happy through our misery. Now, I obviously won't feel that way. The Scouts bastards are slapping us around for like six or seven goals, but you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and Everton saying the Premier League. If you're gonna lose. You know, I think it's more like I, I don't disagree. It's like you know what I don't care. I, I wasn't, I wouldn't say it wasn't wasn't renewed for that to go like down. Frank. That would have like been Frank. fun. I don't yeah. like Frank because I, of course, um, but I do. I like what you said. Let's not. I'm let's talk about like whether or not I want to keep Everton it up. I like the fact that like there was joy in the fans that I wish <laughs> I'm like envious of. Yeah, because like they just <laughs> seem to be genuinely excited because they've had a shit time too, bro. Like I think they did a fan poll of who which fans rate their owners the least, and it's like basically us and Everton at the very very bottom, around five percent rate their owners. But there's there was joy in Goodison today, and I, I want some of that, bro, because I feel like it's been years it's just it, it's been like these false dawns and it's just like this team just doesn't have any heart and it's just it's become soulless and it's just like well, it's just play, it's just the, so it's just like the twitter accounts and the instagram accounts of manchester united bro and it's all through like the lens of the sponsors the lens of how the players present themselves vis-a-vis their their handlers because i'm sure that's what they have they have people that manage their accounts and it's just like it's sucking the life out of a lot of these fans because this like you said, sir, it's there's a grit and a graft to Manchester United. Like that was kind of what this club was built on was hard work, bro. Hard work. The carriage like, and wagon. Dude, people. Hard work always. Like, like you the work Lancashire people off the pitch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Watch the history on, section. Bank Street, bro. Chemical factories. And they want to sell it, bro. And they're gonna sell it to like just get another payday on the way out. They want to sell the grounds of Old Trafford, which need, do they need to replace the stadium in the first place, but even more so they're going to like sell it, lease it back. And like, so, not on my watch. Not so on that my is, watch. that is a line too far. They'll sell the name. They'll, I, I'm telling you they they can go farther and they will. All right. What does our <laughs> man have to say here? Interim, interim. Let's hear from Ralph. Ralph, uh, after last uh, week, a uh, game against Leicester, uh, people were talking that you needed a better performance for me team. Did you see that uh, today? Yes, but only in the first uh, 25, 30 minutes until we conceded that deflected goal. Um, I think we started well into the game. We had composure, we had uh, momentum, uh, didn't always take the right decision, uh, but we were dominating the game. Uh, they didn't have a single shot on our goal. Um, I think we had, I don't know, 70% possession of the ball, but um, we should have scored in, 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 in those first 25 minutes, but we didn't. And after conceding that goal, it was a different game. Uh, the atmosphere in the stadium all of a sudden changed, uh, which was clear that this would happen. And in the second half, uh, yeah, we tried to bring in our offensive players from the bench to to to, uh, to include more creativity with uh, uh, Juan Mata and more verticality with the strikers, uh, with uh, uh, Anthony Langa. But uh, yeah, we didn't uh, find uh, yeah the, the right spot, the right player in order to score. Well, it seems like most of the game was mainly attack against defense, but you didn't manage to create chances. Why was that? <laughs> Yeah, we didn't have enough enough numbers in the box, and always and, and didn't always play the ball into the box. Though we were lacking that uh, yeah verticality, we were playing around them, and uh, once we played the ball into the box, they were able to clear it. Uh, the only moment where where this didn't happen was uh, when Harry Maguire won won the ball, or when uh, Aaron Wan Bissaka at the far post had the chance to score. Those were the only two or three moments we had. Well, it's, Sir, uh, poor Ralph. It's like you, you become manager of this club, and I think it ages you like 10 times as fast as normal normal life because he just looks like he's like already aged like 10 years. The guy came in looking youthful, <laughs> and it looks like just like dealing with this sad lot of, of bluffers is just wearing, wearing through him. So Ralph, you know. He knows. He knows. He knows why we suck. So, but like, yeah, but you he's know, gone, I have dude. To think, uh, you know, there's there's got to be somebody that doesn't want the money. You know, it's like there's more to life than just money. And I, I it's just like, like Ole's payout, like Ralph's payout, like Sir Alex payout. We'll get out of the, you know, obviously, everyone's on the Glazers payroll. When you're on the Glazers payroll, you got to keep your mouth shut. Somebody needs to just be like, hey, man, I already have like. 
Ralph has plenty of cash. Just leave and just say what it is. It's like somebody's got to just like say it. Say it. It's the biggest club in the world. Somebody save it. Somebody needs to like people who work like someone needs to speak truth to power here, man. Only one person. Day, it's just like everyone's shutting their mouth and it's like LVG. LVG. Dude, shout That's out it. to LVG. He's the only one. I was going to say he's the, the only OG. one. Like he's the one who like is really calling it hard against it. And it's like there's so many people. I feel like something will happen. Like it'll take the club to get sold and then they're all going to pile on. But there's only a reason is because they're all in fear of them. And no, that's they're all getting you realize paid. in life. No, they're all getting paid. It's like you you realize in, in life, it's just like, it don't matter. Like you and me started this podcast. We were like, should we be friendly to the club? Like five years ago, we talked about it. Like, what are we going to do? Like, dude, it's like you call like you see it all day, every day. And it's like, if I work there and you, you see how it is, it's like, I'm good. And just like, say what it is. Because at a certain point, it's like, it ain't worth it. It's like this is Manchester United, it's, you know. It's an institution. Somebody's got to help save it because the state of the state of this club, man. Speaking of the state of this club, we had some choice tweets here. I thought it would be good to follow up. Samuel Luckhurst, uh, I do appreciate his takes here. He's been cutting through the Glazer BS. Uh, Manchester United won three of their last twelve games and nine out of twenty-two under Rangnick. That experiment has predictably failed. The worst side. 20 years, the worst Everton side in 20 years, ends the season unbeaten against United. An Everton fan just said, quote, that's the worst Manchester United team I've ever seen. 100%, bro. Worst United team I've ever seen. Highest paid one of all time, too. And then De Gea said, shout out to Dave Saves. I got a soft spot for him. Quote, Everton played Wednesday and they were tired, but they had more desire than us. That's not acceptable. Very sad to lose today. That De Gea calls it a little like Rangnick too. They call you know, it straight, dude. They're it, honest. They're too honest you know? for the rest of these guys. And that's the problem is like, if you've seen the old world and you're not paid to just like cover up the Glazers' ills, which a lot of these guys are, right? If you're on the payroll, you can't say shit. But like Rangnick's honesty from this experiment, yeah, it's failed. But like he's called it to the point where you're like, holy shit, this place is, is a disaster. Yeah, but I agree. Like he has called it. Like harder than anyone has, but I bet you when he showed up, he probably thought about leaving within two weeks. Oh, like, 100%, it's that bad. 100%, I, I, I literally 100%. think that he was thinking about leaving. Yeah. Like it was that bad. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure and he, then, he's yeah. pretty excited to get the fuck out. He'll be like thrilled to be like, I'm good. Like, oh that my club. god, that club's a disaster. That train wreck. And yeah. LVG, dude, he please. was right, bro. He was the only guy that really shot bows. Best wishes to LVG. Uh, unfortunately diagnosed with cancer, sir, which is very sad. So we're sending him all the best. But he was the only one to be like, they're a commercial club. <laughs> you know, and they he's got an axe to grind for good reason. They did him dirty and we shouldn't have done him that way. Um, but he's right, dude. And he's like warned he war I think he war he was trying to warn Eric Ten Hag away from the club. And that's probably why Eric Ten Hag is really negotiating for a compl- like a heavy level of control, which sir, they know. I think people <laughs> The, the football community knows this club has been, like, driven into the ground. They don't necessarily know the reason to the same extent that, like, we kind of harp on nonstop. But they know Manchester United is in disarray. I know. It, it is. It, <laughs> it is. is. Uh, speaking of disarray, seventh place, uh, Manchester United at the table, 31 games, 51 points, tied with David Moyes' West Ham, who have us on goal differential, <laughs> 31 points. 31 games, 51 points. Oh. Arsenal in fifth, 54. Game in hand, though. They have 29 games played. Tottenham with 30 at 54 as well. Chelsea, Scum, 59. Scouts Bastards, 72. Man, Shitty, 73. Obviously, the big game where both teams will be putting in a lot of effort is tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Uh, that probably will decide the title, given how these teams have been playing. And if you're a Manchester United fan, you got to pick between what is it the uh, the turd sandwich and the the the, the douche I forget which one. How, how <laughs> I don't goes. remember what. Yeah, I know something like that. Like South that. Park episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, as far as I'm, I'm pulling for uh, I'm pulling for my boy City Citizens, uh, bro. City, baby. Let's go, big Shitty, pep guy. Shitty. Rub I'm, that head. I, like you know, hey, you're a big Grealish cap guy. No, I can't uh, wait. The reason bro. being, I, would I be, fucking hate the Scousers. Uh, we hate City, but if the Scouts Bastards win, they tie our 20 times record. That to me, 
who I can take a lot of things. It's coming, it bro. It hurts watching you. I can, it hurt. It hurts watching United play this bad. It really does hurt. Uh, I am upset about this team and the state of this club, but seeing the Scouse Bastards lift the EPL to tie us at 20 times while watching this, I don't know if I can take it. So I have to be pulling for shitty, and that will probably make them lose either way. I don't know. I'm just a desperate fan grasping at straws. Keep grasping because they're winning 20 before we win 21. I've been saying that for as long as I can remember. They got a fade. Sure, of course Sorry, they got a fade, old. but but they have a much better dude. They have like, a good coach. They got a good front like, office. They got a they're making good they signings. They, they made some good signings. Apparently, Sal is re-signing, sir. I don't, dude. It's gonna suck, bro. But like, either way, the best it's comment suck. I heard. The best comment I heard was, uh, "Pep and Klopp signed twenty million pound players. They make them look like eighty million pound players. United signs eighty million pound players and make them look like twenty million. That's pound right. Players. That's right. It's like." Oh my god! Like Liverpool, uh, Liverpool just signed another player, and I'm like, I don't know who he is. But I'm he's like, good, I bet you that guy's gonna be good. He's I bet you that guy's yeah. gonna be good. The fullback, the fullback million. on the fullback on fucking Fulham, dude, he's legit. I, I watched a decent amount like, of Fulham. I bet he's good. He's very good, bro. Good. They got him for like a bargain. They spent like 11 million pounds on him, sir. They know how to yeah, buy. Yeah, we need one. Yeah, we need one. We need two. What are we doing? We need left hander. We're, we're, we're doing top. nothing. We're doing nothing. That's what we're doing. All right, we are doing something. We're playing North City. We got a next match. And by the way. You know, Norwich are horrid, so let's uh, definitely lose it. Easy, easy win here at Old Trafford, Saturday, April sixteenth at seven a.m. Pacific Lifetime versus Norwich. We've draw- we've won forty-one, drawn fifteen, lost seventeen. First time we ever played them was Manchester United versus Norwich City in nineteen oh six. Beat them three 0 in the FA Cup. The Canaries. We've won our last five against them. Four in the Premier League. Won the FA Cup. No need to be nervous. Uh, we did beat them in December one. Nothing barely. in the Premier League. Barely. Remember that we barely beat them in December. I know. Uh, I always feel like Ole, like Norwich, is like Ole was always getting fired, and then he played Norwich, and then not get fired. <laughs> or, or, or Newcastle. It happens twice. Or, Newcastle, it happens yeah. Twice. Is it always Norwich? It's always somebody. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Newcastle is the amazing comeback. So that was Joe's Newcastle right? did not get fired. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know the Canaries. A big big team. We know a big uh, Norwich City fan who we met uh, down in Peru. He's a dark ale fan, sir. He also likes dark ales. Yeah, he likes dark ales. Staying up all night. Meat uh, pie, Southampton. Meat pie. <laughs> yeah, he having meat pie as well. Uh, the last five for Norwich City. The Liverpool beat them in the FA Cup. Uh, Brentford three uh, one. Chelsea three one. Leeds two one. They just tied Brighton. Uh, you know. Can't beat Norwich. What are we doing here? Uh, a little history on Norwich. Uh, they were, uh, I don't think we have the founding date on Norwich City here. But as of the t- 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 uh, 2021-22 season, the team uh, competes in the Premier League after they won the 2020-21 e- EFL Championship title. So they actually won the league. They didn't go in the playoff to get in. I think that was that was Brentford who actually won the playoff. They were founded in 1902. And since 1935, Norwich have played their home games at Carroll Road, and they have a long-standing fierce rivalry with East England rivals Ipswich Town, who we actually saw play Fulham in the championship with Mick McCarthy as the manager on the touchline. That was great. We had the VIP seats. We were sitting oh, next sick. to the. They're sick. For like 30 pounds, we got like the most amazing seats uh, at at <clears throat> Craven Cottage, and we were sitting next to the Ipswich youth team. <laughs> it was it was it was great. Uh, fans at Norris, they sing On the Ball City. It is one of the oldest football chants in the world, written in 1890. It's still sung today. So a lot of the singing culture in football can be traced back to Norwich and their song On the Ball City. Found in 1902, Norwich, sir. Found in 1902. Sorry about uh, that. Norwich have won the League Cup twice, 62 and 85. The club's highest ever league finish came in 92-93 when they finished third in the Premier League. The Canaries. Uh, feels like they're going down. <laughs> I think they're going down, sir. And I think on the way down, they might be taking some points off mighty old Manchester United. So based on how the way this season's gone, I think it's going to get bad before it gets worse. And how much worse does it get than losing to Norwich at home, bro, at Old Trafford? Uh, <laughs> if you, uh, There is an argument to root against Manchester United 
uh, I mean, obviously we would never do this, but the Europa Conference League, since we are tied with West Ham, <laughs> seventh place doesn't play in Europa Conference League. And if you run a podcast and you don't want to cover Thursday night games in Uzbekistan, maybe. I don't know. It's not even Europa League. It's Europa League minus. It's like, <laughs> so it would be like Thursday night football, but like worse teams. So we would be traveling all over the place. This is good. I mean, Obviously, we'll always support the club. I'm going to root for us to be Norse, but there is something to lose for, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we'll handle that on our own without too much work. This team finds a way to disappoint after, uh, over and over again. Norris play has been playing the four one two one two. They got Timo Puki, who you know, Billy Gilmore on loan from Chelsea, their wonder kid, and Tim Cruel, the penalty, the Dutch penalty expert in net. He's boys with LVG. Again, you can't beat Norwich. When they're on the diamond midfield, so you know United's midfield, we're shaking on our boots. Oh, we're screwed. Uh, Physioroom.com injuries. Shaw could be back. Uh, he had that heel injury, Ron, no return, McTominay, no return, and then Cavani, I'm good. I'm, I'm no good. return for Cavani. I'm good. Have a mate. It's almost like he's good, bro. You know, he's just calling. A certain he's like, fan might have got a certain jersey and cursed this player. You know, it's like it's amazing how he's just falling off a cliff here. Sir, I think it just uh, speaks to the nature of our signings and how they've gone over the last, I want to say, Three years, I want to say the last seven years, but we haven't had we haven't had many signings go well for us these days. All right, give those injuries. What's your lineup? Dave says net. I'm going to do AWB again. Lindelof, McGuire, tell us Matic, Pogba, Bruno, Sancho, Rashford, Ronaldo. I'd like to feature more kids, but I don't think I don't think Ralph would. Even though I'd put like three or four kids in from the academy, but who you got? My boy Heaton, put in Tom Heaton in goal, like. You know, screw it. Get everyone in there. Juan Basaka, he needs a charity match. Keep him playing. Uh, Phil Jones needs to get in. Lindelof, Shaw, Hannibal, Fred, Bruno, Carnacho, Elanga, and Ronaldo. You know, it's Norwich. Fred plays a holding role. Play Hannibal, Bruno for just kicks. And then I want to see Garnacho. He's called up to Argentina. Apparently the real deal. Can play on the left. He's legit. Get the kids in there. Get rotation. We need to evaluate what we got. These are good games to do it. It doesn't matter if we win or lose, honestly. Uh, booking the Bookies United heavy favorites, minus 440. The draw, plus 550. Norwich to win, plus 1,100. What's your score prediction? So I think United lose 1-0 at home. Pain, pain, pain train continues. You think we beat Everton? You predicted we were going to beat Everton. Yeah, we well, lose. That's, why, that's why I'm switching it up, because this team... I thought, out of the hope, bro. Maybe hope coming out of an international break, but shame on me. So now I'm going to call it like I see it. I think we're going to lose to the worst team in the league. 2 0. United still gets it done. Maybe 2 1. Pookie gets a goal, but, you know, we're not that bad. Let's get into the news. United in the news. Big news this week, ESPN, Mark Ogden, Manchester United set to finalize Ten Hag appointment. Welcome to Manchester Ten Hag. Interesting that, you know, Ajax is willing to play ball. Uh, he looks to be the man. Obviously, we further with Pochettino. Big news drop here in midweek. Uh, it looks like he is the guy. We are negotiating the deal, so we can't announce it. Uh, and the exact quote from ESPN sources in England and the Netherlands have told ESPN that you know, Manchester United have settled on Ten Hag as their new manager and that the Ajax manager is ready to leave the Dutch champions to take charge. So I think what we have here is a yes from both parties and the fine print being negotiated as we speak for an announcement probably in uh, a week or two. I mean, I think the thing is they want to wait until the end of the Dutch season out of respect of Ajax. Um, I think they're in a title race. But it seems to be that the Glazers' cheapness has led us to Ten Hag. So he was my preferred choice. Whether or not it'll really matter because he's going to be dealing with uh, Richard Arnold and Matt Judge to get his signings done, I'm not sure. But ultimately, this was because he was a cheap choice. and uh, That's kind of the noise around the noise um, was that like he had a much smaller buyout. And obviously, Ajax were more friendly, and PSG wanted wanted someone to pay like the full fifteen million 
for Pochettino to get him out and cancel his contract, whereas Ten, Ten Hag was like two to three million pounds. So cheap first, but I'm excited about this choice. If they give him the control and power and time, most importantly, time to build this team back over time, get rid of 80% of the players, like you said, you know, bring the academy players up, bring players in that want to work hard, work for the badge, prove themselves, do something on the pitch and not just like cash a check. It will take a long time, especially with this, especially if they have this front office, it would take four or five years, right? Uh, astute front office. That's why they keep saying these three windows. Like that's no way it's possible at our club. Never three windows. That's like, you need maybe three years, six windows. Um, but that's the big thing is like, if, you have the same front office in place in front of Ten Hag. You just give the man time because this dude, they don't do anything fast. Per Fabrizio Romano, Manchester United are pushing for Eric Ten Hag as new manager. Agreement not completed yet, but talks ongoing on staff and budget, etc. So Romano did pick it up and he tweeted out on uh, tweeted out yesterday. Ten Hag has asked Manchester United to be a hundred percent involved on present. And future transfer strategy, new signings, outgoings, and new contracts. Ten Hag has considered this as a key point to rebuild Manchester United. New signings have to be totally perfect for his idea and the club project. Now, as far as negotiating this, this seems to me that there is only one board at Manchester United, and there is only the voting stock that Glazers own, so you really can't give up that decision-making. You can make promises and can have lawyers pen assurances, but at the end of the day, the decisions are made by the board. Whoever is signed, it is made by the Glazers. That is how it is done. So talking about like you can negotiate for this, um, that's not how it works, unfortunately. People who own the stock get to make the decision. So whether that's budget and then he signs the players, etc., they can always have control at the end of the day. Unless the Glazers sell the club, this will always work that way. Um, today, obviously, we heard the interview at Rangnick says, I don't think the manager should be an excuse to anybody. We are Manchester United. We should not be distracted by that. There will be a new manager. And if it's and if that's being announced now or in 10 to 14 days, it should have no effect on the game today. So Rangnick did have to kind of address the rumors. 10 to 14 days. He's very specific on that timing. So you might know something, sir. Yeah, the Arrivedisi doesn't end until May 15th. I, I think that this is United. They'll announce it. Um, they need to announce it. They because, do again, to. we're free fall, bro. We're coming. We're coming, <laughs> coming to see them. And there's going to be a lot of protests there. But the one thing about this appointment uh, like you said, it's time and you need to have you talk about how social media Manchester United are good at just tweeting a bunch of social media hype, but good at like lying to cover over the cracks uh, in the earnings calls like Richard Arnold. But then the day it's like what they need to be communicating to the fans. It's like, hey, we are very excited about Ten Hag. This is a long term project. And when you think of a long term project, like I, the only thing I can think of. You think of like the New York Giants, right? They just fire their GM and new coach and they bring guys in. This season's a wash. Like next season for United, it should be like literally a wash. It should be like, we are trying to get players out and players in. And this is going to take time. And next season is going to be about that process. And that we should limit our expectations. Um, and this is not a quick fix. And there has to be serious communication about like what this project is, how it'll be executed. And let the Glazers and Richard Arnold prove me wrong, but they haven't been too clear in the past. And I don't expect them to be clear going forward because this is a long-term rebuild. I believe in Ten Hag. I think he's the right guy. However we got here, he's the right guy if the board backs him and they can do this the right way over a long period of time. Similar with Klopp. It took Klopp a few years to get everything sorted out. Pep was like a little accelerated because of that, you know, money that they <laughs> drill out of the ground. Cash. Exactly. So we as fans need to be patient here because next season, this season sucked. Next season, it's probably going to be a wash. You have to expect it to just be completely part of the reset. And who knows if the board is thinking that way. Something tells me Arnold's going to say everything's great. <laughs> That's the problem is like a little honesty would go a long way to fans that have been lied to for 
like I said, two decades. So if they went out of the, they just said and had an honest conversation about where the team's at and say, hey, you know what? We got ahead of ourselves with some of these contracts. We blew up the wage structure. Things got a little out of whack. We are going back to basics, cleaning out some of the squad, investing in youth, bringing in hardworking graph players. But they're not, like you said, so they're not going to tell the truth because they're also lying to Eric Ten Hag. 100%. Oh, of course. Cuz all yeah, they do and- is lie, bro. These guys are are liars. Born in the in in the in the breed like liars to the highest degree. And right yeah, now we're talking about wanna- control, but yeah. like he's being given all Yeah, yeah, of course. You're going to have yeah, 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 yeah. Total total Dude, they lie. They they lied to Ralph. Yeah, but the thing yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. you need advisor. You're going to be heavily involved in like structure yeah, recruitment. But it's the whole thing about business, man. It's like at the end of the day, like you can sign whatever contract you want. It is, but you got to be able to trust people when you're doing like deals and you're working together. You 100%. know, at the end of the day, if you don't have trust, piece of paper, that's just a can just be a mess in court. You got to have trust. And the Glazers are the type of people that make a lot of promises because. You know, they know they got good lawyers and they know that a lot of the promises they make don't matter. So at the end of the day, like they, they they're 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 in Florida. They're not doing nothing. Speaking of this club, Shaw's thinking about getting a new deal from Romano. Manchester United will discuss Luke Shaw's contract extension in the coming weeks. As expected, Manchester United have an option to extend the deal until 2024. But want to negotiate with Shaw after Bruno's new deal. Let's sign the left back who has been up and down for Manchester United for a very long time. And the new new manager doesn't have an opinion on it. Kind of strange here. No, I mean, I think this goes in the camp of let's not let players who probably have a market value leave on a free again, right? The same way that like, no matter what market even, value, even if Bruno's not in form, you don't want how much, is, how much you want Manchester Shaw to be out of contract. So you could sell him if you wanted to. All I'm saying no, no, is like, I'm there saying, is an argument. You've got made. till 2024. We have till 2024. Yeah, but that's a zoom. So yeah, like, why would you like, like again? Because you're gonna have a new Manchester manager coming in, and you players. probably need a year to see like, okay, this could be a wage bump. It's gonna be a wage. Of course bump, it is. I'm which not... means that would be preventative to sell. So you tell me what you really think. You want to get my take on it? <laughs> I'm just saying, of course. No, I'm like, just saying. Yeah, of course he's gonna get a wage bump, but you're gonna tie him down to a long term contract. So if like he isn't the guy, you'll be able to get more from him than say, like I said, say Ted Hag comes in and. He's not going to ship Shaw first because there's so many other problems. How much does Manchester move. United sell Shaw for right now? Not on the big wages. Thirty. Who's buying? Who's twenty-five who's the million? Buyer? I don't know. Like who's the buyer? He's English. He is a left back, starting left back for England. For what that's worth? I don't. I don't. Uh, who's paying? Who's paying a lot of money for Luke Shaw? Is my point. Nobody's paying a lot of money for any of our no, players, sir. No one. No one. No one's. No one's knocking on our door. No one's going to pay a lot of money for Luke Shaw. And bumping his wages just only guarantee that if he isn't the guy under the new manager, that we're not going to be able to sell. Like, I mean, this is that's also part. Like, Jesse Lingard was so hard to sell because he's making so much money. Well, I don't think he should I get a bump because he's already out like, on 150 Bruno's a week. Bruno's a no-brainer. Bruno's like, yeah, you can sell Bruno, like, 100%. Extend him. If big club wants in, you can sell him. Pogba's in that same caliber. Luke Shaw, I don't know. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, obviously I think of him – uh, I think good things to Luke Shaw, but as far as his market value, uh, I just think we suck at selling players, and he'd be one that we would like sell for like eighteen. <laughs> and he's already he's already you know? on over he's already overpaid. So like, here's the thing: I'd be all for extending him, but keep him at one fifty a week because I think that's plenty for his quality. But like you said, he'll get a big bump that he doesn't deserve, and you're going to be probably just stuck with a player that could have recurring injury problems and has had fitness problems in the past. Me Pi FC. Hashtag. He strikes me as a part of the English soft serve FC. Of course, group. of course. With he McGuire. strikes me as like, like it's it's similar where it's like, uh, if the England faction wasn't so soft, like it seems like Harry's soft, like Luke Shaw, and you know he's very emo about Mourinho, and then he plays well for a year, and then he kind of goes missing for a year, and then this is a consistent. You know, it just seems like the the comments he made about Mourinho and oh, I proved you wrong, and all this like very thin skinned. And then same with Rat. It seems like this whole crew kind of running together. And I, that's why I want Ten Hag. I want the new manager to come in and be like, who's the problem before we extend it? And with a player like Bruno, you know you can sell him. But like a player like Shaw, I don't know. So interesting move from the front office. They say, why aren't you signing um, midfielders on a free like Barcelona is doing? Why aren't you signing these young prospects from Fulham? Oh, it's because we're extending these inflated wage bills for players that we don't even know. Are going to be part of the future. We talk about sell sell the lot, but we're extending a 
lot of these players already. Like soon we're going to see an Eric Bay extension before Eric Ten Hag comes in. This is the writing on the wall. That's all my whole point. You have the need to rebuild, bring in Ted Hag, extending big wage money for players who we're unsure about. There, those are the two things fighting each other. That's why I doubt Ten Hag to get it. It's going to be more of Rangnick 2.0. Hundred percent. More of more of uh, Murtaugh signing Sancho and getting no defense and getting no midfield. That's kind of what I'm thinking. United could continue to do. Uh, more on Ten Hag. He's lined up his trusted Ajax head of performance, Alessandro Schoenmaker, to be the member of this backroom staff. And we we uh, we read these backroom staff articles. Right, Ralph Rangnick bringing in psychologists going to make a difference. Like who the hell knows? Manchester United signing set piece coach going to make a difference. Wah, wah, wah. So as far as this goes, like we couldn't sign good backroom staff to hit us in the face at this point. Yeah, I mean, if we're going all with the manager, you want to build a team around him. But like you said, there are bigger problems than front room staff or deals, right? Calvin Phillips name being thrown out, right? You would assume we're not going to go for Harry Kane and Declan Rice, which is probably also the right move. And that makes me more excited about a Ten Hag move because it's like. You know, Potch would have gone like overinflated English, and I think we should move away from that because we've clearly found that that's that's not necessarily the formula that's going to get you to success because we have a lot of English in our squad that's uh, not necessarily pulling their weight. Not like anybody is, but they're they're not helping. Manchester United are such like, and you want you talk about all the issues that we have with the club. Another issue that we have is that the minute we're interested in a player, their value goes up by 100. percent Calvin Phillips is 70 million if we want him. If Lester wants him, it's 35. It's just one of those things with United where it's like, we you better off signing like Kim Bembe on a free and like being really nimble and getting a bunch of players and playing smoke and mirrors. Nobody knows what we're doing instead of this like overly telegraphed agenda on like one player that another team's just going to ask a ridiculous high price and we're going to wait to the end of the window. That's why I worry about with the Rices of the world, the Phillips of the world, these high priced English players from the EPL, it's like we got to be thinking, be a little more nimble and have a little more shots on goal. I like Calvin Phillips. He played well for England. He, he does a good job, but he's not going to be worth the inflated value. Unless the Dan James deal, the front offices of United and the Leeds are not so harsh on each other. But if I was negotiating with United, it's easy. Overly price a player and just wait. <laughs> and everybody and no knows break. we're a bunch of chumps, right? right? We have terrible front exactly. office. So it's, it's like, like that's why you have to. I, honestly, it used to be buy English, buy Premier League proven when you could, when you could afford to. But now they know we could be taken for a ride left, right, and center. So you got to, I think, you get to buy outside of England, right? And do like the Bruno approach buy them from a secondary league and buy a lo- pay for a little less, right? Because we were talking about. I forget the player's name at the moment, but the Leicester attack in Madison, right? As we're looking at Bruno and it's like, it would have been the same thing. We would have paid double Bruno and maybe it would have worked out better or worse. But like whole point is you have, you can't be paying these weight, these, these fees or we need to be paying like 25, 30 for a player and not spending 70 on players anymore because we have a lot of players to buy. No, Gabrielle is a perfect example. Uh, the center back that we were in for at Arsenal coming from uh, the French league, you know, it's a punt. It's kind of like a Lindelof. Hey, is he going to be the man? You don't know, but you, know, you give him a season in the EPL and he's, he's doing well and he's young. And, and that's kind of where we, that's the area we should be playing in, in the middle of the field and at center back. It's like we need mold because they've left it so late and they kicked the can down the road and you got to replace by, and you got to replace Jones. And Oh, by the way, McGuire's not the guy and Lindelof, the mark is still out on. You can't replace all four of them, but you need two and they got to be young and they got to be cheap. And it's like, that's what we need in the midfield. That's what we need at center back. You know, there's a lot of work to do for United. And I can't believe Ten Hag wants this job. Because if I was looking outside in, if I just saw Reina come in and what happened to him, who wants this job? This looks like guaranteed failure. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I would take it, obviously, as a Muppet. Most people, like, (laughs) want the opportunity. And, sir, it's also, like, everybody wants a lot. Not everybody. Because obviously Klopp didn't want it. A lot of people want the chance to work at a club this esteemed and this unbelievably historic and great. But a lot of people also know that like this place is a fucking shit show. But there's also the ego of being like, I can fix this. I can fix this. If I only, you know, if I'm given the right tools. Problem is, is we know these fucking owners better than they do, unfortunately. And we know they ain't gonna, they're going to lie to you left, right, and center until the day they leave or the day they boot your ass out of the club. So 
we know what to expect. That's why, like, we're not full, falling for it, hoping that he can do well. But, like, we know how it's going to go. They're going to go for the Calvin Phillips of the world because that's what John Murtaugh and uh, Richard Arnold are valuing, sir. Like, old English wants old English. Absolutely. Uh, and the last bit of news here, we're going to get on to the ownership. Hashtag Glazers Out. Obviously, this podcast, we've always been that way, selling the Glazers Out merch, talking about the finances from day one. Uh, there's a fan group has merged on Twitter called the 1958, obviously referring to 1958. Um, their logo is the FA Cup badge logo we wore after the media care disaster that year being very consequential to the club. Uh, on Twitter, you can follow them at, at the underscore underscore 1958. Um, their profile says an underground group of Reds intent on up- upholding the values of Manchester United, its culture and traditions the 1958 are not here for the likes or followers. They seem to get along with the American Red Devils. <clears throat> uh, we have been in touch with them. The reason being is they have actually called out Must, the Manchester United Supporters Trust. Must back in the day when the Glazers initially took over, they were heavily behind the green and gold to the club is sold movement that was, you know, flying high when you and me went to our first games. Now, a lot of fans listening don't even understand if they haven't followed the club that long, that that was huge. When, when Malcolm Glazer first took over the club, he did it in a buyout, put a lot of debt on the club. And then these fan consortiums who used to have a lot of, you know, ownership and say in the club as it was public, got basically pushed to the side and lied to by the Glazers who came in and the Manchester United Sports Trust kind of really became popular at that time. <clears throat> I was a member at that time. And over time, the voice and the protests and the effort behind sort of the Glazer Out campaign has kind of waned. It's very bizarre how that happened. Um, but the 1958 are actually calling out Must for their inactivity, uh, trying to work with the Glazers behind the scenes on sort of a fan share scheme. And it's been known for weeks that the fan share scheme that was presented to must or they're in discussions about is not up to standard for fans. So basically must has not publicly rejected the share scheme proposed by the Glazers because after the super league fiasco, the Glazers said, this is what we're going to do, right? Joel Glazer's letter, you know, he doesn't do interviews, doesn't talk about anything publicly. He said, I'm going to communicate with the fans, which would be the supporters trust. Um, the fan forum, etc. They said they were going to uh, basically put together the fan share scheme. They went through what they were going to do. And a year later, we're approaching the anniversary of the Super League. They have not been able to come to an agreement. And so with this, the 1958 have put up many letters on Twitter. Um, and I'll just read from this part of it talking about their interactions with the Manchester United Sports Trust. They say, despite reaching out to Musk so far, we have not engaged in any dialogue. Today, we have seen another news article in The Guardian stating the same update we have known for weeks that Must have received proposals for a fan share scheme that doesn't meet, meet the trust benchmark. So we asked the question again, why did the Manchester United Sports Trust feel this information was not fit to be shared with their members? And if the Glazers did not pre- present a suitable proposal by the anniversary of the U- European Super League, what will be your action? Will you be prepared to protest with the fans at the Chelsea game? Unfortunately, so far, the silence is deafening. So again, they're asking for action from the Manchester United Supporters Trust. To me, why even enter dialogue with the Glazers? They have the resume. You know where they stand. That letter dropped from Joel Glazer. We said it on this pod. They are going to do nothing. It is time to protest. We will be going to the Chelsea match. In Manchester, we will be at the protest with the 1958, and we're in dialogue with them. Uh, and, you know, if anyone is interested in protesting in the United States, you know, uh, there's ways that could be done, obviously, peaceful and legal protests. We're trying to organize in part with the 1958. Uh, we really think that right now is the time to put the pressure on the Glazers. Now, for me, I, I do think the protests are helpful. But I hope this movement turns into more of an organized online global movement where we can hurt the Glazers where it matters. The only place that they're going to pay attention to is why they own Manchester United. That is the money. That is the way to get them out. That is how we can have our voices heard. Protests are a great demonstration. But at the end of the day, 
this movement is important. The 1958 are important. America for Devils, we are with them. But I think we need to be really focusing on sort of hitting them in their pockets. Sir. So we're a social media company. So where do you hit them hardest? It's on social media. The, the, the closest I've seen exactly. to an effective form of protest in the modern era is it's around capitalistic interests. Always. It's like break them financially or hurt them financially. And that will move them. Otherwise they don't give a shit, bro. They don't care about protests. They care about like you calling out their sponsors on Twitter and saying, I'm not going to buy your, your whatever. I'm not going to team viewer is fucked. Anyway, I mean, those people are going to like, they're, they're, they're a one way train to, uh, the bottom, but I'm just talking about like putting all the pressure on sponsors, owners, anyone that does business with them. It's like that's the only way to do it. We did that for like a couple of weeks after the Super League, maybe a month. I think that's the only way it's going to truly get them out um, against their own terms, sir, because I don't think they're looking to leave anytime soon. There's a lot more schemes they can do in the next 20 years while they collect their dividend. Sell the name of the stadium, sell the land, lease back. It's like, sorry, it can get worse and worse and worse. And these people are shameless. They are shameless. So we just got to keep, excuse me, keep the pressure on them. Support the 1958. We'll be there. Green and gold till the Glazers are sold. So we're going to bring in the clown shirts in mass. We're showing up in Manchester. Let's go. No, I can't wait. And like, you know, uh, 1958 hitting the nail on the head. Like, why are people okay with this? Like the Glazers said, all those things they're going to do. Okay. You listen to them for a year. They haven't done anything. Um, you need to tell us why they're not do how bad the proposal is. Oh, by the way, it's bad. Very I can tell bad. you how bad it is. Bad. I can literally tell you how bad it is. Like, I know how bad it is. Like call, we need to start like must 1958 America red devils, us fans need to start using our voice together just because you want to protest. Glazers doesn't mean you don't like this club. This has happened before in our history. Fans have had to stand up to our owners, demand, they participate in the process it's it, it makes sense it's look at the platforms we have in 2022 it's like time to go and like if you watch today's game you see how this club is treated you know it's time to band together i can't wait let's jump into fan questions here quickly sir i know it's a marathon podcast but a moment like this you know uh i was thinking that i was, like, I was like you're like oh we're in disarray so we're, every pod we're in disarray bro i was it's like there's just there's been one of these like once a month, just like a nut punch where you're just like, oh, a new bottom, sir. Leicester, Liverpool, Pot there, City, Pot there, Pot there. new bottom, Everton. We lost to Everton, sir. Fat Frank like gazumped us today. Like didn't he looked like he had no idea what he was doing, but he beat our asses. I feel like the coyote just like falling down and bouncing off all those cliffs again uh, and at again the end and again. At M. Hersey 5, quote, I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm already beyond anger and frustration. I've accepted the fact we're a mid-tier team and don't even feel anything when we lose. We need to stand up and have our voices heard. Bring the protests on May 15th. We'll be there in full voice. We will be there as well. Look forward to seeing you there at M. Hersey. At Mike United Mets, sir, if you want to DVR the next 4.30 a.m. match and get the pot out of few hours <laughs> late, no one can blame you. Insult to injury at this point. I appreciate it, Mike. Alex might take you up on that one, but I'm a glutton for punishment. So was, am I. I think, I, I, I think I'm, I'm the 4.30 a.m. guy. I, I think at one point, Alex, you were not the 4.30 a.m. guy, but now you are. I would say today I should have slept in. I mean, after that performance today, it was especially brutal. But no, you're never going to miss a game, sir. But uh, that's why I have dark no, yells no, There was before. a point like two years ago where like – I think we weren't watching every game live, like especially 4:30, and then I and I was like, I was like, sir, we got to do it. <laughs> sir, the pod never sleeps, bro. The pod never sleeps. We were doing the pod right after the fact, sir. So. I know. Uh, at G O H F R quote: Who's playing worse than us right now? At best, we can barely manage draws for us relegation sides. All that money and these guys couldn't be bothered to flush the toilet when they're done, much less <laughs> to make a play on the That's pitch. Great. Uh, at M Maybaugh 13, unsurprising result, honestly. However, my frustration has turned to apathy. I'm over the season. I'm over this squad. I'm over all of it. Hashtag Lasers and everyone else out. At D underscore Cole, quote, season's a wash. Players don't care. Just don't want to be there. Just cashing checks. I'm tired. Tired of getting my hopes up that maybe we won't be shit this week. Tired of watching us misuse and fail. Fall further behind our rivals. I'm just tired and done with it. All our owners and players. And you know what? You can add to that list. I got a text from my scouse bastard friend here. Oh, don't do it. Come on. I was just going through some tweets. 
first, I was going to send you screenshots. Yeah, don't do it's too, too sad. Don't, don't, so I'll let it be. He doesn't even want to. He doesn't even want to send me the the memes and tweets. So then anyway, number thirty just years, like, just, just just send them back. Send no, but, them but my point is like it's so bad. They're just literally like I can't even say anything. Good. Like they're good. they're done. Good, they're good. good. They, that's how bad we are. Yeah, we're you know? that bad. But here's the thing: when, we're, when Liverpool were bad and we were good, we didn't get tired of talking shit. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> and they won't. Uh, all right, that's the podcast. A team in crisis. An early morning pod. Perpetual Lots state of, of crisis. Ravings here. Perpetual we're state doing, of crisis. Uh, you know, but we're here. Pod never sleeps. You like the American Devils? We're four fans, five fans. Join our Discord. Invite is pinned on our Twitter. Support the podcast on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash America Devils. Check out our website, www.americaredevils.com. Click on store. Uh, and also, write a review on iTunes wherever you listen. Just me and Alex rambling. Uh, you know, my daughter's keeping me up, but I'm still here. Let's go. Rumbling. You got the top downloads. Stumbling, bumbling. Yes, sir. Number one. You ready for this? No, it's all. Freedom forward. Number one. How you doing? How you doing? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Philly, PA. Rest in Virginia. Pittsburgh, PA. Fort Lauderdale, Florida twice. How's that possible? Twice on the board of Fort Lauderdale. Appreciate you. I don't know how that happens. Must be a glitch in the matrix. Pittsburgh, PA. A lot of PA. Orlando, Florida. Hamsterdam, Netherlands, sir. Must be uh Hamsterdam. Oh, I'm kidding. You remember that? You remember that great show? Oh, I love I love the wire. Um it must be our boy Ted Hag listening in. Williamsburg, Virginia. And last but not least, Orangestad, Aruba. Appreciate all the American Devils listening week in, week out. Damn, it's been a rough year. But the community that that you guys are all part of, the American Devils, unbelievable. We couldn't do it without you. Pod never sleeps, and because, you know. It's just so much fun, sir, and being part of the Discord, the blog writers, everything that's going on. Feel very grateful um, because eventually, it might be ten years from now, but eventually we're gonna write this ship and we're gonna be right here, week in, week out, sir. Four thirty games and all. Let's go. The sweet isn't so sweet without the bitter, baby. Give sweet. me that song. You Let's want a, you want some sweet? Oh, what a night, sir. Enjoy the week, everybody. We'll see you for Norwich next one. Later.